Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. I hope that you're having a fabulous start to your week. Welcome back to our weekly Minx Monday Q&A. Before we get started, let me share the bag that I'm currently rocking, and that is the Chanel Mini in the pink lambskin. All right, so let's get this show on the road, shall we? Starting with the first question from Mia. I was wondering, when are times that you don't bring a bag? Or do you ever have times where you feel uncomfortable with the designer bag? Uh, fabulous question. And for me, it's not necessarily about feeling uncomfortable, but more so when I don't want any type of distractions or when I don't want any type of fuss. Those are the two that end up standing out the most. And what I mean by that is, as far as distractions go, uh, I, don't, I don't like to use um, obvious or loud logos on handbags when it comes to interviews. Sometimes I don't like to use any designer handbags whatsoever, mostly because I don't want I don't want what I'm wearing to eclipse any of the attention from the answers that I'm providing to their questions. I don't want any type of distraction. I don't want them to focus on my handbag, on my earrings, on my makeup, on my hair, or anything like that. I want it to be based solely on uh, what I'm bringing to the table, what I'm bringing to the company, and not because of what I'm wearing or anything like that. So that's, um, that's one example. The other example, as far as no fuss, is when I'm running errands and if I'm gonna be going in and out of the out of the store uh, I do have smaller handbags that I don't feel are bulky but at the same time sometimes I just want to use either my key pouch from Louis Vuitton or my six ring key holder and just have it be that on the six ring key holder I end up adding or I end up putting my driver's license some cash I add my my key fob to it and that's it I'm good to go same goes for the key pouch so sometimes going for a very versatile small leather good is what I prefer to use as a handbag instead of a handbag. Uh, now don't get me wrong, I love bags. We all know this. We, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. And even though I end up incorporating a handbag into my lifestyle 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, it is somewhat liberating when you don't end up carrying a bag and you just end up going for a small leather good. But as far as the other, uh, when it comes to distractions, as I said previously, it mostly comes down to interviews and just wanting them to focus on the words that are coming out of my mouth instead of anything else. Other times I end up ditching the luxury bags and I end up going for a contemporary brand. I just like to have fun with the pieces that I have within my collection and give them each their fair share of love. Now I do end up showing a little bit more love to some of the luxury handbags that I have. However, I love them all equally. I think that they're all fantastic. Uh, so I am just a, I am a handbag lover through and through. Uh, but as far as the times that I, that I don't use a handbag, uh, it's when I am just super like laser focused about going into the store and coming back out without any type of uh, wandering around. Uh, I will have to admit the times that I have done that, I do end up freaking out because I feel like I forgot my handbag. Like I left it in the cart or what have you. I'll sit there and I'm like, Where, where's my bag? Where's my, and I have like a mini freak out, like a mini, ma uh, mini panic attack. And then I quickly remember, oh, I'm just carrying my key pouch. <laughs> so word to the wise, in case you end up doing that, that might end up happening to you. Hopefully it doesn't but it might, <laughs> it definitely might. But I would love to know, are there times that you guys don't end up carrying a handbag either because you're uncomfortable or either because you don't wanna carry it or whatever the case may be, let us know in the comment section down below. But fabulous question and hopefully I was able to answer it. Next question from Maria S. If you were to rank the following bags from worst to best and why, what order would they be in? The Palm Springs Mini, the bum bag and the nano speedy. Oh snap. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's a tough one. I did bring them out. So we have a little bit of eye candy. Here is the nano speedy, then the Palm Springs mini backpack and the bum bag. Uh, okay. So from worst to best and why I'm going to have to say the Oh, I don't like saying worst. Okay. I'm not going to cheat. All right. Because we all know I have a tendency to cheat. I'm going to stick to it. The worst I would have to say between the three is the Nano Speedy. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I love this bag. I have been using it like crazy these last couple of weeks. Uh, but I would have to say that the biggest con, as we as we talked about a couple of weeks ago, is the fact that you can end up detaching the strap. If the strap was removable, it would be a major, major game changer. And it is a small bag. It still packs a punch, but still, it's not as big as other handbags that you can carry everything and the kitchen sink. So I think because of that, 
it would it would be the worst again I'm, I'm so sorry i'm so sorry all right now between the palm springs mini and the bomb bag which one would be next worst to best worst to best i love them both i think that they're incredible bags and the bomb bag i have been gravitating towards it so much within these last few months and the palm springs mini i've had it for quite some time and i love it as much now if not more than when i first got it so i think that they're both fabulous but worst to best, I'm gonna have to say the bum bag. The bum bag because even though you can end up carrying all of your daily essentials and then some, the fact that you can't remove the strap I think is a con for it. Uh, although it does have adjustments and the adjustments are very generous so that way you can end up using it as a shoulder bag or as a crossbody bag the way that I like to use it. But I also like kind of hand carrying it this way. Uh, but because of the strap, even though it is adjustable and it is somewhat generous, I don't feel it has as much versatility as the Palm Springs Mini. So this one for me would be the best because of that versatility, because you can end up using a different strap to make it that much more comfortable for you. It is carefree. It's small, but uh, it definitely ends up fitting a lot more than you might think. It actually ends up carrying uh, around the same amount as the bum bag, if not maybe a little bit more. Uh, so I think that's wonderful, but that is how I would end up ranking these handbags from worst to best and why, but fabulous, fabulous question. Next question from Shami Koo. Hopefully I said that correctly. What do you think of the multi pochette and monogram clips for guys? Thinking between this bag or the Palm Springs Mini. All right, so before I get any further, let me answer a picture of Louis Vuitton's Trio Messenger right now. This item comes in at $1,960 here in the States, and what can I say? I absolutely love it. I think it is fantastic. I think that it's perfect for men. I think that it's perfect for women, and it is very similar to the multi-pochette in the sense that you can end up deconstructing it and use the items separately, or you can use them with other items that you have within your collection, which I think is wonderful, but the Trio Messenger does come with silver hardware, which I am a huge, huge fan of. Uh, I love the fact that the strap doesn't have any contrasting color, and uh, not only is it the, not only does it have my monogram eclipse, which I'm crazy about. But the fact that it's reverse monogram eclipse, I think is just wonderful. I am obsessed with that print. But besides that, the one thing that I love, uh, about this bag the most is that little key pouch that it comes with. Oh my goodness, it is so incredibly beautiful. You have a reverse monogram eclipse on one side, you have monogram eclipse on the other, and I just, I think it is so incredibly cute. Can you imagine if they sold it separately? I would be all about that. But in general, when it comes to the Trio Messenger, I think it is a wonderful bag. I think that it offers so incredibly much. I know that it has caused a major, major buzz on social media, and rightfully so. I don't think it has a crazy, crazy price point considering once again the versatility that it has and what it brings to the table. Now between the Palm Springs Mini and the Trio Messenger I don't think you can go wrong with either. I think both of them are beautiful bags. Both of them are versatile. Both of them uh, are very carefree. I appreciate the top zip closure that the Trio Messenger has over the Palm Springs Mini. So it's a matter of which one you see yourself using the most. Both of them are wonderful. But what about you guys? How do you feel about the Trio Messenger? Are you a fan? Are you not a fan? Were you able to add it to your collection? Whatever the case may be let us in the comment section down below. So I don't know if this ends up helping you out, but good luck deciding between the two. Next question from Jada James. What are your top five staples to your collection? All right, so the five staples for my collection would consist of two handbags, one being a tote, the other being a handbag that I can dress up and dress down, and the other three would be small leather goods, which would fall in the category of a catch-all, a wallet, and something for my keys. And I do have examples of them. I did bring them out so we have a little bit more eye candy. And these have pretty much stayed the same uh, this entire time, although one of the handbags did end up changing. Uh, but as far as the small leather goods go, the catch-all would be the Louis Vuitton mini pochette. I am crazy about this item. To me, the possibilities are endless in how you can incorporate it. And I know I say that all the time, and I will be saying that about another item as well. But if you have been watching my channel for a while, you know uh, how crazy I am about this uh, about this piece. Uh, the fact that you can incorporate it into various aspects of your life I think is wonderful and it is also very, very durable. So absolutely love the mini pochette as a catch-all. And I do have other catch-alls within my collection, but this one definitely ends up taking the cake. As far as something for my keys is my end-all be-all small leather good. The one that will be with me until the bitter end, that is Louis Vuitton's six ring key holder. Uh, this to me, you guys, 
guys have heard me talk about it a million times, so I'm not going to go into too much uh, into too much detail on it. But I know that it's somewhat antiquated. I know some people feel very strongly about it. They don't uh, they don't really like it. Uh, but to me, this has been one of the best items that I could have ever purchased because it ends up saving the interior of my handbag. It ends up saving uh, the smell of the goods that I'm carrying, the sunglasses, my phone, what have you, from any type of scratches from keys. So the fact that my keys are housed in something like this, I think is wonderful. Not only that, the fact that you can also use this as a little mini wallet, I think is wonderful because you can end up putting your driver's license in here, a uh, credit card, some cash, and then you're out the door and good to go. So end all be all item, something for my keys. As far as a wallet, it's not a traditional wallet, although I do have mad love for the wallets that I have within my collection, but this one is a little bit different. This one is along the same lines as the mini pochette in the sense that the possibilities are endless. And I am talking about the key pouch uh, from Louis Vuitton. I love this item and the times that I have used it as a wallet, it's perfect. It's not too big. It's not too small. I'm able to fit all of my essentials for my wallet without getting too carried away. Uh, the fact that you can use it as a catch-all, you can use it as a bag charm, you can use it for your keys, I feel like there are so many ways that you can incorporate this into your lifestyle as well. So it is small, but I feel that it definitely ends up packing a punch. Uh, and I am also crazy about it. So this would be my wallet, if you will. Now, as far as the handbag that I would dress up and dress down, that is a Chanel's medium classic flap. This bag ends up working out perfectly with my lifestyle and with my wardrobe. As you guys know, I am a very, very casual dresser, and I love to incorporate this bag whenever I'm using sneakers, a t shirt and jeans, which I pretty much end up wearing 99% of the time. But the times that I do want to dress up and have a little black dress and have heels on, this also ends up working out nicely. So it's very versatile. I love the size. It ends up fitting all of my essentials. It's very comfortable and it also has a great backstory to it that uh, holds a special place in my heart. Uh, so Chanel's medium classic flap. And not to mention the fact that it is carefree because of the caviar leather. As far as the tote, this one will definitely not be a surprise. That is Louis Louis Vuitton's at Never Full MM. I'm kind of torn between the monogram and the Demi Azor because the Demi Azor, I've used it a lot more throughout the time that I've had it than the monogram, uh, but I also like the fact that I haven't experienced any type of color transfer with the monogram as I have with the Demi Azor. Uh, but in general, when it comes to this bag, I think it is absolutely incredible. I love how spacious it is. I love how versatile it is. I love how comfortable it is. And once again, because I am such a casual dresser, this ends up fitting in with my wardrobe perfectly. And I am crazy about it. I will scream it from the rooftops, I don't care. Uh, but I, I, I think that this is the ultimate tote. Very simple, but just, I feel it speaks volumes in how you can incorporate it and how you can use it. I can feel myself wanting to talk about this a little bit more, which I'm not going to do because I've done many, many of videos on this bag. You know how I feel about it. Uh, but yeah, this is, this is just an incredible, incredible handbag. But those would be my five staples. A tote, a bag that I can dress up and dress down, a wallet, something for my keys, and a catch-all. But I'm curious, what about you guys? What would be your five staples? Let us know in the comment section down below. Next question from Christina Tripati. You've mentioned that the Fendi Peekaboo and Lady Dior are both on your wish list. How are you going to decide which to get first between the two? I'm torn between these two, but can only get one. Which features do you prefer for each? Is there a winner in your mind? Uh, all right, so with the Lady Dior and the Fendi Peekaboo, I have been talking about these bags for quite some time. They have both been on my wish list for what seems like forever, and I have done the research. I have watched video after video of each of them. I have done the list of pros and cons, and they pretty much end up being right about even, and I think that's probably why I have such a difficult time deciding between the two. Uh, but with the Lady Dior, I was actually talking to someone a few weeks ago, and my apologies, I can't remember the name so I can properly shout them out, uh, but they had mentioned that they are also a very casual dresser. They ended up buying the Lady Dior, and they still felt that it was too dressed up, and they didn't end up reaching for it. That makes total sense to me, and I wonder if push comes to shove, if that would end up happening to me as well, because with the Lady Dior, I I've always said that I feel that this bag is very easy to dress up and dress down, but maybe it's not as easy as as I would have thought, so that does also come into play. But even with that said, I love the Lady Dior. I love the structure. I love the fact that you have so many different, uh, you have a variety to pick from. I love the history. I love the jewelry. So uh, it's a little bit tough to say, but I have so much appreciation for it. But at the same time, I wonder why I hesitate so much in wanting to add it to my collection if I've done all of the all of the research that goes with it. Now with the Fendi Peekaboo, uh, I think that this bag is maybe 
maybe a little bit more casual and might end up working out for my lifestyle a little bit easier. Um, I love the fact that you have a variety of different sizes to pick from, different colors to choose from as well. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of stuck between the black and the red, uh, although let's be honest, I might end up going for the black with the gold hardware, uh, but the leather looks absolutely incredible when it comes to the Fendi Peekaboo. So right now it's, <laughs> I have no idea. I feel like I'm, I am the most indecisive person on the planet. And sometimes I'm just like, yes, I know which one I'm gonna go for. And I feel so sure of myself and then I end up seeing a picture of the other one and then I'm like, well, maybe not. <laughs> so I feel like I'm all over the place. I have no idea. Neither one of them really end up holding their resale value as well. Although I will have to admit that the Lady Dior seems to hold its value a lot more than the Fendi Peekaboo. But I do appreciate both bags and I think that they're both insanely, insanely gorgeous. Maybe this will be the year that I end up adding one of these bags to my collection, although it wouldn't surprise me <laughs> if, it's, if it's not, if I end up taking them both off the wish list and I end up going for something completely different. Because as I said before, sometimes I feel like that nagging that I have, maybe it's not for you, maybe it's not for you, maybe that's my gut instinct saying, this bag just might not end up working out how you think it's gonna work out. And maybe somewhere in my body, they know that, but someone please tell my singing heart <laughs> because they're not getting the message. I have no idea. I would love to hear your thoughts on the comment section down below about either of these two bags. And Christina, I don't know if this makes it worse. I don't know if this was able to help out. Hopefully we get some amazing feedback so that way we can end up making our minds and maybe go for one, go for the other, or just get rid of both of them and go for a completely different bag. But fantastic question. Next question from Cogitational. As a mom and a working professional, I have a hard time carving out the time to switch between my bags and wish I could enjoy my collection more. As a result, I've started looking into more luxe bags that can be more versatile, but always seem to get caught between a great looking bag, but not as practical, can't fit paperwork inside, any suggestions for a beautiful bag that can hold all that and a little more other than a straight up tote? Uh, this is a wonderful, wonderful question. And in all honesty, I have yet to find for myself, I have yet to find a handbag that ends up suiting my work needs, that ends up going with my outfits, going with my lifestyle, that is versatile and very comfortable that isn't a tote. Now I'm not saying that there aren't incredible handbags out there by any means whatsoever, but I just feel that when it comes to a tote, it ends up checking off all of the marks and it ends up working out perfectly for how I end up incorporating it into my lifestyle. Now I have tried other styles. I have tried other silhouettes and I've tried to, uh, especially try to incorporate them with my work lifestyle. And um, sometimes I find that I have to carry a tote and my other handbag, which doesn't always end up being, it, it's not always the most comfortable thing to do, especially if you have a lot of paperwork, if you have your laptop and then you have your other handbag. So you, your shoulders might get a little bit, uh, they might get a little bit heavy. And there is a crossbody bag out there that I find um, is a great, great work bag. It's the Sienna PM. I believe that they had the Sienna MM if I'm not mistaken. And I really like it because it does have that crossbody option. Uh, it has the zippered closure and it's not a tote, but it ends up fitting so incredibly much. So I thought that that was an awesome, uh, that was an awesome silhouette if you didn't want to go for a tote. Now I do have other styles and I do have other silhouettes within my collection and I absolutely love them, but I always seem to gravitate towards totes because it makes it that much easier. It's something that I don't have to think about and I don't have to worry, am I carrying, do I have enough space for this? Do I have enough space for that? I always end up carrying a little bit more and a little bit more, the pack rat that we know I am. Then again, I do have a preference for the style and maybe because of that preference, it hinders me from being able to see beyond other bags that aren't totes. That could be the case, although I have tried them out and I feel that they always end up coming up short. But then again, it could be because of what I had just mentioned about the preference. But I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. Do you feel that there's a bag out there that ends up checking off all of the marks that's perfect for your everyday and for your work life that isn't a tote? Let us know in the comment section down below. But fantastic question and hopefully I was able to answer it. 
And the last question from Stephanie Huntington. Any update on your Coach Tabby? Are you still liking it? Any color transfer? I'm debating about adding one, but wanted to hear your thoughts. All right, so I did bring it out, so we have even more eye candy. This is the Coach Tabby Top Handle 20, and I'm happy to say I still absolutely love it. I think that this bag is wonderful. I love the size, I love the structure, the leather is incredible, and I am also happy to say that I haven't had any, zero, color transfer. And trust me, I have not babied this bag whatsoever. I've used denim. I've used darker colored clothing and nothing, absolutely nothing. There was an instance when I came in here and I thought twice about using it because of the outfit that I had on, but I was just thinking, nope, not going to happen. I'm going to toss that out the window, kind of like what we talked about a couple of months ago. And I'm so happy that I did. I used it all day and zero, zero color transfer. I thought for sure I might end up having it on the back or on on the corners but as you can see nothing and I don't treat my handbags you guys know that I don't treat my handbags um, and it just goes to show the quality that this bag has for me personally I think that this is such a wonderful handbag to go for especially if you're unsure of how a color might end up working out for your lifestyle or how a size might end up working out for your lifestyle and if you're nervous to maybe venture into or spend money on a luxury handbag by going for uh, something like this I feel you can either get your fix or get a feel for it without breaking the bank and even with that said I think that the quality that these have for the price point that they have is just absolutely out of this world. Uh, no issues with pop stitches, no issues with uh, with the hardware chipping either. And as I said before, I have not been, I have put this bag through the ringer and I'm happy to see that it's still pretty much the same way uh, from when I first got it. And it just makes me appreciate it that much more. So much so that as I had mentioned previously, that this is a great way to get your fix or kind of get your feet wet with um, wanting to add a certain color to your collection. In the past, I've always thought about going for a white handbag, uh, like a Chanel classic flap, I think would be incredible. But now that I have this bag, not only is it, not only does it end up checking off that mark for me, but it ends up working out better than I anticipated to the point where I don't want to get another white handbag like a solid white handbag, because I do have the petite and away from Louis Vuitton. This one just kind of has an, it almost has a special place in my heart just because of how it's been working out for me that I am ridiculously happy. I don't know if that makes sense, but I don't want another handbag to kind of steal its thunder just because of how it's been working out for me. And I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic about it. Absolutely ecstatic. So I think it's wonderful. And once again, if you want to get your feet wet, if you want to try out a style. I think that Coach has some incredible handbags, not just the Tabby not just the Tabby Top Handle 20. They need to change that name. Let's just call it the Tabby 20, maybe not because of the other ones. But <laughs> anywho, uh, I think that they have an array of different handbags with amazing quality and friendly price points as well. And um, you might end up being as, uh, as pleasantly surprised as I was. And the fact that it reminds me of old school Coach just gives it an extra extra brownie points for me so i love this bag and i foresee this being uh, a major favorite within these next um couple of summer months so i think it is fabulous but fantastic question and hopefully i was able to help all right you guys that does it for Ming's monday q a i hope that you enjoyed it and i hope i was able to help you guys had some awesome questions this week if you enjoyed it make sure and give it a thumbs up and i will see you in my next one and as always make it a fabulous day or not the choice is yours have a great day